What's poppin' T Squad? It's your girl Keisha, and I'm here with tonight's All T All Shade Claw Season 2 Episode 1 Premiere Review Video. So happy Claws is back. It was one of my favorite shows of 2017. It made it onto my top 10 television shows of 2017's list. Can't wait to see what this season is going to bring, but the season premiere was action-packed. I really enjoyed it. Let's get into tonight's review. So we start off tonight's episode with them playing doom 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 That was my shit. I can't remember what the fuck the name of the song was, but I think it was like some yin yang twins. Uh, what's that nigga with the gold teeth? That nigga song. Me knew. So Desna getting Uncle Daddy, Roller, Dr. Ken, and Bryce together about the numbers dipping at the clinic, but there being an overflow of money. She wants them to start doing pickups every day, and she wants to get a new wholesaler. She sets up a meeting for Uncle Daddy with uh, a guy with a rep from Boca who has competitive prices on generic oxy uncle daddy say she's getting you know how of her shits now because of this turnaround doesn't say welcome to the new normal sweetheart <laughs> get it together miss girl she tells them we were gonna take their asses out if they don't turn this shit around asap that's is like we clear bitches because i don't want to have this conversation with you niggas again they say yeah they say good because i got some other shit that i could be doing i know y'all didn't think this was all for y'all i didn't wear this paisley print jumpsuits for you motherfuckers this meeting is adjourned. We then see Dr. Gregory banging her motherfucking back out, honey, in the wee hours of the motherfucking morning. And they fucking to this bomb ass song. I'm gonna have to Shazam that shit because I need it on my playlist. There's no over there licking his skin like he's some chocolate ice cream from Ben and Jerry's and shit. They over there knocking over lamps and shit. I'm like, girl, what's going on? Is it dick, dick, dick? Do you feel me? It's my bitch. I know she felt that damn. Jumanji ass dick all up in her motherfucking cervix, bitch. She felt that shit in her goddamn esophagus. Yes! So they finished fucking and he want her to stay, but you know, she got a, you know, things to do. She's a girl on the moose. So she get home that morning to check on Dean, who was quite upset with Miss Girl for being gone all night. She, she gotta remind him that she is grown and so is this pussy. He tells her, ain't nobody talking about, you know, you giving your vintage vagina <laughs> to the doctor. He tells her that Virginia brought up some crazy Russian lady and she don't and she said, Virginia got a big ass motherfucking mouth. He thought she was making better life choices, but Desna says that the Russian isn't as bad as he thinks. And then she got that. He calms out and accepts her word. Desna comes to the shop, honey, freshly fucked. And everyone sees it and points it out. She over there get her back cracked. Polly sends Marnie off to school and reminds her that Dr. Ken is coming over for dinner. They like this little makeshift family now. She got her dressing like a little mini Polly. We're going to find out, I guess, as the season goes, what's really going on with Marnie. Has she changed? Was she still out here hoeing for a motherfucking McDonald's? Quiet Ann shows them that her ex, the police officer, is already kicking it with other lesbians shit on football and kickball teams and shit. Um, she's taking her getting fired quite well. Probably tell you, know, you got to let this shit go. You can't keep on stalking this girl. They all scramble to make themselves in the shop presentable for Reva's niece, who has Rolla's baby, who comes in every day to make sure them hoes is on their motherfucking P's and Q's. She's a teenager. She's breastfeeding the baby. You know, she is in love with Rolla. She is eager to see that nigga. Rolla show up looking like a fine-ass motherfucking piece of white chocolate. A fine-ass motherfucker. I want to fuck. He speaks to everyone. That's like, you ain't gonna speak to your baby mama. He looked back at old girl. He said, I ain't got time for that. And I'm like, ooh, you was just like a little trifling-ass nigga. Bryce with him looking like a whole nigga himself now. <laughs> he got parts in his head and dressed like the fourth member of the Migos. I'm like, nigga, who are you right now? Des to say, you know, y'all finished the runs already? Bryce said, I tried to open that account, but there were too many digits in the tax ID. Des said, the bank been open for an hour and a half. Y'all just not coming and telling me this shit. Roland said, it's open all day, plus we got slips anyway. She look at him like, you motherfucking jackass. You can't have you niggas do nothing. Des to say, in my office now, Roland. Roland look back at Bryce like, I'm about to dig in them motherfucking guts, nigga. Then walk over to Bryce say, hey, babe. He's like, what's up? <laughs> I'm like, Bryce, stop it with the wicked shit. This is not you. You are a family man. Stop trying to be tough. God. She trying to talk to him, but he tell her to go talk to her boyfriend. She's like, that ain't my boyfriend. I already told you that. He say, so you ruined our marriage for some random dick. <laughs> 
he gathered them damn edges real quick. Jen said, you know what? I am tired of being judged by Vanilla Bryce. <laughs> And walk off. He look at her like, bitch, I wish you would say something else. Ooh, I want to fight your ass. Ooh, I hate you. Dazzler tells Rolla, dumbass, he going to wind up dead if he keep on playing. Rolla say, we need to take these rushes out and reset back to one. She like, child, please, I ain't working for your crack ass again. <laughs> she being that fat ass over. He grabbed her by her waist and I was like, yeah, do you want to go stroke you up? Don't mind. Do you mind if I stroke you down? I don't mind. All through the night. I don't mind. Yes. And so he grabbed her by her waist. And Roller say, you still with that pussy doctor? And then say, it's none of your finance business. <laughs> Roller say, Ruval ain't right for you. And she says, and you are? He say, if that desk could only talk. And she say, it would say 30 seconds or less, nigga. Don't even get it twisted. She tells him it is over. And to go wash this motherfucking money and to get the fuck out her fucking face. Bryce and Roller go next door to Hank's place. He's been going over there every day fucking with that man. Bullying him and shit. And Hank is tired of him and his shenanigans. He's trying to swing on Hank. But Roller pull him back and Hank threatens to call the police on him if he do this shit again. Roller get up in his face and threaten him. And I was like, see Hank, you don't want these problems. You shouldn't have been over there fucking Jen and them big ass titties and that small ass waist and them round ass hips. You should have known better. Bryce and Roller go back to the clinic to find Dr. Ken burning all the goddamn church's money. Because he paranoid the feds going to drop in at any moment and catch him having all that goddamn money that they can't fucking account for. He mad at them because they ain't been depositing the money like they supposed to. They tell him, you know, we got this, calm the fuck down. Dez is mad because Uncle Daddy won't answer her calls or accept her authority as the new bitch in charge. Jen reminds her that the man is in mourning. He did just lose his damn wife. Polly say, Reva don't care about that. Dez say, Reva is Putin to me. <laughs> Reva then walk in behind her and say they need to talk. She's like, girl, we sure the fuck do. So they go back into her office and Reva say she want more profits. She want Des to start moving coke with the girls. Des don't want to do it because she don't want the girls to get no more deeper into this shit. Reva like, what's the difference between selling coke and selling opioids? Des like, one is legal, the other not so much, sis. Reva say, get hustlers to come to nursing home. Hustlers pick up product and deliver to Shishis where strippers will sell it. She tells her they need to do it by 8 and there is no exceptions to this shit. Try me if you want to, bitch. Desna now gotta go light a fire on Uncle Daddy ass. Mind you, Reva dumbass niece almost walks out and leave her baby behind. <laughs> I'm like, between her and Roller as this baby spurns, that baby is fucking doomed. Uncle Daddy at home eating jelly donuts and having a yard sale to get rid of all of Wanda's old things because he can't have that shit around him. Dez will show up and tell him Reva ain't planning to do what she say. Virginia's still throwing up and trying to hide her pregnancy, but you know Dean don't miss shit. And he call her out on her bullshit. She swears that she was going to tell him. He was like, you know what, I understand it. I was just trying to be patient. And he holds her hand. They have like a little, really, you know, little nice little moment together. Dez and Gregor are in his kitchen dancing to Word Up by Cameo. Now, Word Up. I don't buy the night. People have every night. Do your dance. Do your dance. Do your dance. <laughs> he asked her how was her day and she said you know my boss is giving me real a real fever Gregory say you know start a revolution and stays a coup he's actually giving her advice unbeknownst to her because he knows everything that's going on he gets a call and says it's the hospital but it's really Uncle Daddy calling he wants to take Reva out but Gregory wants to wait and tells him to play his part Reva's niece Mama Zlata shows up and no one is checking for her ass Reba's man comes to her and tells her that there was no coke at the club. Her sister overhears and asks if there anything that she can do to help. Reba calls Dezza but gets her voicemail and she breaks a glass because homegirl is pissed off that ain't nobody following her fucking instructions. Reba calls Polly as she's having dinner with Ken and Mari. Reba orders her to find Dezza and to bring her to her ASAP. 
Gregory tells Des that he wants to bring her and Dean on his boat. And we was both like, yes, what time? What I got to wear? What the weather going to be looking like? You need me to bring something? We are ready to go. Polly pops up to her dismay and tells her Reva was trying to reach her because they got a leak at the shop and they need to go now. Des tells him, you know, I got to go. So sorry. She kisses him good goodbye. But lo and behold, Gregory knows who Reva is and who what Reva does. He knows that Desna is working for Reva, but he just playing it dumb so she won't find out who the fuck he really is. Reva's sister demands her daughter tell her what's going on. Olga tells her that Rola wants nothing to do with her. Zlata feels like Reva has been turning her daughter against her. Reva comes into the room and says they have to go make a change in middle management. Desi, Polly, and Quiet Ann go to the nursing home. They go in the back where the coke is being bagged up by some old white bitches. <laughs> they start packing it all up as Reva storms in. Reva introduces her sister Zlata, who is an author, like myself. Reva says, where is that homosexual? <laughs> Talking about Uncle Daddy. Polly said, Uncle Daddy's back. <laughs> that shit. Dez is saying, you know, I talked to him and he's a mess. You killed his wife but we gonna pick up his swag, girl. Reva said, you can't control your people. Zlata tries to interfere but Reva shuts that shit the fuck down and tells her to stay in her fucking lane. I was like, well, who runs the yard? Who runs the world? Reva. Zlata says in Russian that you've been trying to turn Olga against me, you dry bitch. <laughs> Reva say, you make it easy pissing away our family's money with infantile shoes. Dad's say, you know what, girl? Clearly, y'all got some shit y'all got to work out, so we just gonna go ahead and lead y'all to this shit. Zlata then pulls out a gun on Dazza. Dazza look at Reva and say, bitch, you gonna let this girl point a gun in my motherfucking face? That's what we doing now? I thought me and you was home, girl. I gave you half off last time I did your damn nails. Zlata threatens to sell Dazza and them children to motherfucking brothels and to kill them and chop all their limbs and all this crazy ass shit and then she say to you know to Reva you know that's exactly what we do in Georgia ain't that right sister and Reva like yep sure is then the next thing you know instead of shooting Desna she turned the gun on Reva and shoot that bitch in the motherfucking head pow and I was like this bitch ain't to be motherfucking played with, bitch. It was brain matter all on Desna and Polly face, bitch. I would have been pissed the fuck off. Especially if my makeup would have been done. Everybody would have got their ass beat. Zlata then said, I chose the lane. She says, I'm have a good night. They gonna sort this shit fresh in the morning, bitch. <laughs> So the next day, the girls at the shop freaking the fuck out. Polly ain't made out for this shit. But Jenna up there fanning her with some sample nails and shit. That was a great touch. That was funny as fuck. Polly started breathing all heavy, having a panic attack. She's like, <laughs> and I'm like, bitch, take a Xanax. Dancing and the girls trying to talk her off the ledge and shit. And having her imagine spending the day with the Kennedys. And I was like, shit, I imagine that shit too. Because you know, them motherfuckers was some bootleggers. You get drunk fucking with the goddamn Kennedys. So Zlata arrives with a cardboard cut out of herself, honey. She speaks to everyone and tells Desna that she would have never killed her. She just used her as a distraction. She actually likes her. She says Reva always turned everyone against her growing up. Zlata says Olga is the only good thing I have. Desna relates and brings up Dean. Zlata has Olga give them bonuses, champagne, and appetizers. She wants them to form a sisterhood. She wants to change the look of the shop and expand the clean. She wants to start an all-male review like Magic Mike. She wants to change she-she's into a hammer and pickle. <laughs> this bitch is insane and I love it. Zlata then tells Quiet Ann and Virginia to go look for some dancers for the club. She then puts Polly in task of teaching them how to dance. Her and Desna then go to she-she's to tell the boys the new change in, you know, order that she's the new head bitch in charge she asked uncle daddy you know how do y'all get past the insurance companies with you know selling you know oxy and stuff he don't want to tell her shit but desna and bryce tell her ass everything because them niggas ain't trying to die behind this bitch zlata then pulls desna to the side and tells her you know i want you and the girls to start you know selling a coat Desna like 
I can't do that. I'm not doing that. Some of my girls have been in jail. I cannot do that to them. I'm standing firm on that. So I feel like, you know what? I respect that for real. You were a king just like a boss. But you basically, instead of bossing up in front of me, you need to boss up in front of these niggas and show them who the fuck you are because they don't respect you. As a matter of fact, come with me so we can show these motherfuckers who the fuck you is. So then they standing behind the door as Bryce is sitting in a chair. Behind him is some of Zlata's goons. They then turn on a video recording of Jen <laughs> turning on her iPhone and recording her and Hank fucking. He hitting her doggy style from behind. Bryce losing his shit, starts screaming, ah, ah, <laughs> and shit. He freaking the fuck out because he don't want to watch this shit. That's like, bitch, how you get this? This was months ago. She's like, I got it from the cloud. <laughs> then they go over to Uncle Daddy house and throw some Molotov cocktails at his house to burn his shit down. When Uncle Daddy and his lover come running outside, cussing him the fuck out, call the police. And then she say, tomorrow we gonna handle Roller. The next day, Desmond and all the girls, rolling all them show up to Zlata's house. She come outside and she tell them, basically, we all about to become a family. We about to become one. It's about to be a wedding today. And he, she demands that Rolla marry Olga. He like, I don't want to marry this goddamn teen mom. What the fuck I look like? He tried to run off. <laughs> but what up, go and sack him to the ground. They had a wedding and shit. Everybody sitting there like, this is some bull, swanky, hurt my nigga. Olga and Roller come down the aisle on some goddamn horses. It's a whole shit show. He don't want to say I do. One of her goons got to put a gun to his chest. It is a whole mess. After the wedding, the girls congregate by themselves trying to figure out their next move. They, you know, make a pact to stick together. Roller come into the room to talk to Des. He like, bitch, what we going to do? Because if she doing this to me, what the fuck she going to do to you? And she like, all of a sudden, now you care about me? He was like, I always cared about you. You know, what's good? Like, I basically want to stick this white dick up in you again, but you ain't on my bullshit. She tell him that shit is over. You need to back the fuck up. And as she's saying that, Olga comes in the room like, husband, time to go take pictures. And she looking at them like, oh, okay. But she grab her dick and they go off. And I was like, okay, this is a prelude to some shit in the, in the future. Either she going to get really jealous of Desna and Rolla's relationship or Desna and Rolla going to fuck again or have it in an affair. And she going to find out about it. This going to be trouble. We see Desna and Jen on the balcony watching to see if Bryce is going to holler at other women. And he turns everybody down. So Jen still feels like she got a shot with him. Because she wants their marriage to work. Zlata then pulls Desna to the side and tells her, you know what I'm saying? This is what control looks like. This is what, you know, control in a room motherfuckers look like. And she like, this don't look like control to me. This look like chaos. And so she break it down to her how this is control. You know, I didn't forced together two powerful families I got my daughter back and I took off my evil sister everything is good and she then turns to Des and say and I know Jen is your home girl but you need to remember you are the boss now so as a gift to you I'm going to give you her house that's like I can't do this I can't take this I don't want this she was like well basically you ain't got no choice bitch she tried to turn her down again and she was like look she only got that house by fucking a motherfucking hillbilly. You did all the goddamn work. You worked your ass off of this house. Take it, bitch. You're like my sister now. We're family. And she hugged her and Des looking like, what the fuck have I gotten myself into, Jesus? Fix it, Ayala. What the fuck is going on? And the episode goes off. I give the season premiere of season two of Claws an A. It was very good. It was funny. I can't wait to watch the episode again in case I missed anything. Let's talk down below. Let me know what you think about tonight's episode of Claws. I'm happy to be back. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like, and subscribe, and to hit that notification bell. But 10, my new novel, First Wives Club, Volume 1, Melon and Magic, is on sale right now. The Kindle, Nook, and Paperback links are down below. It is a bestseller already. Thank you to all of you. I love you guys so much, and I will see you for my Love and Hip Hop and Basketball Wives reviews. 